Hi, I'm Missy Cohen, and welcome to New Beginnings to Health. New Beginnings to Health is about introducing people to alternative therapies. Conventional medicine is great, but frequently adding in alternative therapies helps people find true healing, free from pain, with more energy and vitality than they ever thought possible. With me today is yoga instructor Carol Waite, and she will share with us her experience with just that event. Hi, Missy. Thank you for, thank you for having me. Um, I started taking Swarupa Yoga in 2002 uh, after having injured my knee in college done the physical therapy piece. It had gotten better, a doctor had cleared me, but it never felt the same as the other knee. It always kind of clicked a little, felt a little funny, never quite could get it as straight as the other leg. And I tried this Swarupa yoga class, and after the first class, I was just blown away because my knee felt different. Mm -hmm. And I just knew I wanted more, and I wanted to you know, go further. And after two years, I started teacher training and then became a certified teacher myself in 2004. Nice, and you do a lot more than that now. But let's let's back up a little bit and talk about the Swarupa yoga. Okay. <laughs> so Swarupa yoga is a fairly new style of yoga. It was uh, founded in the '90s by Rama Birch, who is now Swami Nirmalananda. She took vows several years ago to become a Swami, and it's really based on the principle that all your tensions begin at the tailbone, and that when your tailbone muscles are tight that tension climbs up your spine through your sacrum, through your waist, and up into your rib cage, mm. creating problems in your neck and head, and then the tension in the lower spine goes down your legs and cr creates problems in your knees and legs and feet. So it's really based on a like healing the whole body. It's really not a power yoga. It's not an exercise form of yoga. It's really about healing the body, and which is why I had such great success taking care of my knee doing this style of yoga. Right, that's excellent. So um, we have some props here. These are some of the props that we use in Swarupa yoga. Yes, and you say that very well. Thank you, <laughs> struggle with it a little bit. And we do, we use a lot of props. We even use chairs sometimes for certain poses. We use blankets, we use blocks. And part of the idea of using the props, there's two reasons. One is we always wanna meet your body where it's at. So everyone needs a different amount of propping. No two bodies are alike. Mm -hmm. So we wanna kind of meet you where you're at so that you get the most effectiveness out of every pose and the most release of your tight muscles in every pose. The other piece of, the, of using props is that when you do lay on the floor, which we do in many styles of yoga, if you don't raise your knees slightly, your low back is gonna arch. And so when we bring your knees up on a couple stacked blankets, we allow your low back to come closer to the floor, which is what we really want. Because when you're supported, you're going to release more. We actually Max. have a little saying, support equals release. We have a lot of little sayings in Swarupa <laughs> Yoga. <laughs> and that is one of them, that the more supported your body is, the more likely you're going to release tight muscles rather than stretch them. And we really don't want to stretch them. We really want to release that tension and have it be gone. And that's when the healing really starts. I have to say, I've taken one of these classes with Carol, and it was very relaxing, and I call it the comfort food of yoga. <laughs> I really enjoyed I like your class very much. Yeah. Uh, is there special clothing someone needs to wear to take a yoga class? In we this really case? recommend that you come in with something with layers, first of all. Some people get really hot, some people are a little chilly, so it's always good to have layers, like a sweatshirt that you could take off and have a t-shirt on. Elasticated pants are really a must because we do a lot of breathing practices as well, so you wanna be able to feel like you can really breathe fully through your whole spine, into your belly, so it's good if you have something a little looser fitting around the waist. Excellent. So you, you, um, you do Sarupa yoga, but you also are a yoga therapist. Yes. And yoga therapy is really a one-on-one -on -one session. It's a private session with someone, and usually people come in with a specific problem, and it's more targeted, because they in class, you're really teaching to the group, mm -hmm. and it's really geared to what the group needs, and I can explain a little bit more about how we run the classes. But in a private session, you would come in and you'd fill out a little form that says, you know, I have pain in my low back, or I have pain in my neck, I have pain in my knee or my foot or I have plantar fasciitis. And what I do is gonna really be 
dependent on what you where your pain is. So we can be much more direct and focused on what we do in a private session to kind of really help you and focus on you and what's going on. So in the group sessions, how does that work? In the group sessions, it works in that I might prop people differently depending on what they come in with. So if they say I have low back pain, I'm gonna be really careful about what props I use, when, especially when they're on their belly, mm -hmm. so that we don't get a sway back. So different propping for different types of pain. When people have shoulder pain, we might even modify a pose or give them a substitute pose or give them more propping in a pose. Mm -hmm. So um, what, what are some of the typical problems that people come to you with? Sciatica is a big one. Yeah. I see a lot of people with sciatica. Um, I also see a lot of people with just with general neck and, and shoulder tension. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of neck pain out there. People are doing a lot more of this, mm -hmm. um, texting and getting a lot of pain in their neck from that. A lot of knee pain. A lot of plantar fasciitis suddenly has come up. So it seems to go in waves of what people come in with. Some people just come for stress problem sleeping, mm -hmm. you know, we teach them a breathing practice, um, which will help them quiet their mind, help them sleep better. Uh, stress is a big piece that people come in with. And there's three different things we could do in a private session. One is just learning a daily practice. Sometimes students who come to class regularly want to do a private session and they just want to learn, like, what could I do at home? on my own to kind of continue what I'm doing in class. Mm -hmm. So we'll just come and they'll learn what they can do in a private session. And they maybe don't have any particular pain or physical problem or health issue, but they wanna just be able to continue when they're not in class. The other thing we do is yoga therapy with poses, where in a class, you might hold your own leg. But mm -hmm. in a yoga therapy session, I would hold your leg for you, which gives you a deeper release. It takes the changes deeper and further. We say that each yoga therapy session is like coming to six classes. So sometimes people come because they want to take things a little deeper. Mm -hmm. And we have one other yoga, th actually I have two other yoga therapy uh, techniques. One is called embodiment, which is really a hands-on treatment where um, there's four different hand positions where I place my hands on your body to, as you lay in Shavasana, which is yoga's relaxation pose, to release the tensions in your spine very rapidly, more quickly than we can in class. It's a very deep treatment, um, really great for people who are really just suffering from stress, anxiety, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is vichara, which is actually a talk therapy, and that's a process of self-inquiry. And that's really good for people who maybe have a problem they wanna solve, and they want to look at it a little differently. They might have a past pattern that they realize is cropping up like they always do the same thing, always make the same mistake. And it's a great way to kind of uncover the underlying reason behind that. And it actually creates a lot of healing in your mind as well as your body. Yeah, because we know our minds are related to our bodies. Yes. So something going on in there can affect our whole physical right. aspect. So that's right. really important. I would love to know what kind of training you've had to do this therapy. <laughs> How many hours? Um, I've had over a thousand hours of training. Wow. Um, the basic CSYT, Certified Srupa Yoga Teacher, is a, a 500 hour training course, which I did through what was then called Master Yoga Foundation and is now called Srupa Vidya Ashram. And I've continued my education with them to get another 500 hours plus training uh, to become a yoga therapist. And each course focused on a different piece. We did, you know, a whole yoga therapy, 10 day training on neck and shoulders, on treating pain, on le uh, leg, spine and feet. So each course is about a week, a week and a half to um, really perfect these yoga therapy techniques. It's a lot of training. It is a lot of training, but it's a huge commitment on your part. It is, but you spread it over a couple of years, so you you do it in bits and pieces, so that you don't have to go, you know, for a month at a time. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't live there. It's yes. it's like a school. Yes, they do. They have their own. It's down in Pennsylvania, and it's called Lokananda is their um, training facility, and they have a building, and it's it's actually really nice now because they have. Um, it's kind of in a downtown center, like downtown Ashland, 
and they have a storefront where the facil training facility is and upstairs they have rooms for everyone to stay in. So you really get that ashram experience like you would if you went to India. Yeah, which is kind I'm of sure neat. you're going to have to explain ashram. <laughs> so ashram is a residential facility where you could go and live in India and learn from a master teacher. Mm -hmm. And you could spend time there and kind of learn from whoever your master teacher is. And so... So that kind of brings you into that feeling of yeah, that ashram. It brings you into that feeling. And the nice thing there is that they bring the food in. So you don't have to leave. You don't have to go out to eat at night. You know, they bring in the food. You live there. You train there. And so a lot of your kind of daily needs are taken care of, which really allows you to dive in deeply to the training and not have to worry about like, what am I going to eat tonight? Or do I have to cook? So it's, it really allows you to kind of immerse, immerse. Yes. Great word. And really immerse in the training and in the practices. So excellent. So tell me, what, what are some of your favorite clients? Um, I have some clients who've been with me a long time. One of my favorites is a woman who's, she was one of my first students in 2002 when I first started teaching. And she has been with me ever since. And she takes my class and she comes for weekly therapy sessions just because she wants to keep taking the yoga deeper. Um, she started out really as a neck and shoulder client mm -hmm. and she's just continued um, just working on that shoulder stuff. She had kind of came in, started with a frozen shoulder and has just kind of thawed that out and keeps working on different things. So she's she's been one of my favorites because we, when you work with someone individually, you really get to constantly see them change and grow and their practice deepen. So it's really nice to have treated someone long term like that. It's really wonderful. And what would you say one of your successes is? Uh, one of my successes was a man who came with sciatica pain and really um, we worked together for about weekly for about six months. Um, he had a herniated disc, a bulging disc, and so, which was leading to the sciatic pain and he had done PT and um, he came in and came weekly for sessions. He didn't want to come to class. He didn't want to do yoga at home. It was like, you know, I just want you to fix me. <laughs> and he came weekly for sessions for about six months. And then it was like, okay, I can drop down to every other week. And then, you know, another three months, it was once a month. And, and then he left because he was better, you know. So it was a real success. After about a year, he really had no pain anymore. And I run into him occasionally. He lives in town and he'll be like, I can't believe how great my back still feels. And that was I don't know, eight years ago That's that great. I worked on him with him. That's a great story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent. So um, how many times do you think on average someone needs to come to see the benefits of a yoga, private yoga session? A private yoga session? It, a lot depends on what they come in with. Most of the time it's once a week. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the beginning I'll see somebody twice a week because to just get them started and get them, you know, some relief really quickly. But most of the time, once a week is enough. For months, years? It depends. Of course. <laughs> um, a lot depends on how they feel. A lot depends on what they do at home and if they do their homework that they're given. And a lot of people just stay with it or a lot of people will come for yoga therapy for about a month, maybe six weeks, and then they just transition into class and they come weekly to class. Mm -hmm. So it, it varies, there's really no set formula. It depends kind of on the condition they come in with and how a lot is how much they're willing to do at home. Right, do you, do you um, work with any conventional therapists, any like PT people or? I have a few that we refer back and forth to. Um, just people I know that I've met and we, we refer, but, and sometimes I'll, we'll actually touch base and um, to find out like if, if the person is going to PT and me, I try to contact that physical therapist to kind of find out what they're doing and we work together. Mm -hmm. So you, you see a real, a way that conventional alternative therapies are fitting together. Yes, yes. Yeah. That, that's really kind of what I was trying to get right. to. Right, yes, yeah. I do. And the one thing I do try to say is don't do both in one day. It can be too much body work. And, you know, so if someone is going to physical therapy and they're, say, going Tuesday, Thursday, I say, 
come and see me on Friday or Saturday. Mm -hmm. Like, don't come in on Tuesday after you just had a physical therapy appointment, just because that's a lot for the body to process and a lot of change. So we kind of spread it out. Right. Do you suggest any kind of like ice therapy or anything to help people relax afterwards? Not particularly. No, no. You don't work with that? No, I don't. Okay. Um, so you were saying like people come from your private sessions and they meld into your your group sessions. Right. Where do you teach? I teach in two different studios. One is uh, I have a Monday morning class at Tranquility Yoga in West Ford. It's going to be confusing. And then I teach four classes at Sohum Yoga in Westboro, Mass. So both in Massachusetts, um, just two different towns. Right. And, um, both great studios. I love them both. Really I'm nice. familiar with Sohum. Yes. And it, it's by far one of my favorite studios because it's not hot yoga. It is not hot yoga. It's a small group session, what, maybe eight to ten people. Usually, yeah. Yeah, in a well-lit, beautiful, clean studio. Yes, it's very nice. And at all the classes there, I'm the only Swarpa teacher. The other, there's a Kripalu teacher and a Hatha yoga teacher, and there's two meditation teachers and a um, restorative teacher. So we have a kind of spectrum of different styles of yoga, but they're all on this kind of healing styles of yoga. They're not the exercise yogas. They're, they're more just about healing the body, connecting the body and the mind. There's no power yoga there. There's no um, hot yoga there. So right. we kind of all have the same philosophy, even though we teach different styles, which is great. So it's more of a healing center. Yes, yes. Yeah, which is one of the things I value about right. it. I know. It's really nice. So, um, so tell me about the embodiment therapy. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I was exploring your website and I saw that up there and I'd never heard of that before. Yes, it is unique. It was developed by Swami Nirmalananda, so it is very unique to um, Sarupa Yoga. It is a Sarupa Yoga technique. And basically, the client lays in Shavasana, which is laying on your back. Your knees are over a few blankets to kind of get, like I said before, to get your low back to the floor as close as we can. Sometimes it doesn't always come all the way down to the floor, even with a few blankets. Sometimes people still have some tension and there's a little bit of an arch, but that's okay. We're, again, mm -hmm. meeting Working you where you're at. And then the, there's four different hand positions, each one focusing on a different part of the spine. So the first hand position is to release the muscles at the tailbone then the sacrum, then the waist area, and finally the pubic bone. And so most people, I'll start just explaining the first hand position, which is I put one hand under your sacrum, and one hand comes down the back of your thigh to find your sits bone. And really holding those two bones, mm -hmm. there's muscles that go from each and then to the tailbone, and the, that support, again, support equals release, helps those muscles to begin to unravel. And they unravel pretty quickly with this therapy and it's very deep. It's one of the deepest things we have. Um, even in, when we do yoga therapy with poses, we might even do some embodiment in a pose. So um, it is one of the, the most healing treatments that we have. Is, is there a particular something, particular client concern that you would use it for? I sometimes, I use it for different things. Like I said before, I use it a lot for stress and anxiety. I might use it if someone um, wins a gift certificate and they just want to come and try it. Mm -hmm. uh, they And they're not, because yoga therapy, when I do with poses, it really kind of builds from week to week what we do. Because each yoga therapy technique, each pose has different adjustments that we can do. So we really kind of build week to week. But if somebody just wants to come in once, then I might do embodiment with them to give them just a nice, deep, relaxing opening. Mm -hmm. I also do it a lot with um, bulging discs. It's very good because I can get into that. It really helps to get into that lumbar spine to kind of get rid of some of that tension in the lumbar spine, which is causing those discs in the low back to bulge, to contract and cause a bulge or a herniation. Mm -hmm. Does, is that reversible, a bulging disc? It is. So... We say that, right, if these were your two vertebrae, I'm going to give you a visual, right? <laughs> One side of the spine is always tighter than the other. Uh -huh. And when you have tension in the spine, it's kind of pulling down on one side. 
So maybe it's pulling down on your right side. The bulge will tend to go out on the left. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, it's got to go somewhere. There's that little disc in there. It's got to go somewhere. It's getting compressed on the right, and it pops out on the left. And as you actually relieve those tensions, that bulge can go back in. And studies have actually shown that many people, they did a study in a hospital where they took x-rays of people coming in to the emergency room. Some people coming in with back pain, some people coming in for something completely different, and I guess they were the control group. And they did x-rays on their low spine, and they saw that many people had scars of having had bulging or herniated discs, but never had had any pain. But so you come in with the pain, if that nerve, if that bulge is hitting a nerve, that mm -hmm. pain is agonizing for people. And, um, or if the, if the bulge actually herniates and bursts, and then those white blood cells rush in to kind of start to heal that herniated area, then of course you get inflammation. And if that inflammation is hitting a nerve, you get pain again. Mm -hmm. So it really depends, you know, it depends again how much yoga are people willing to do, but the spine will actually start to lengthen. And, you know, people will leave a yoga therapy session or classing. I feel taller because they released some of that tension in their spine and their spine actually lengthened and they got a little taller. So nice. you can get rid of that tension and that bulge can go back in once once that tension is removed. So there's some hope for so people. So there is hope, yes. There's a yeah. lot of hope out there. Nice, so you, you help relieve tension, you help relieve anxiety, you help relieve pain. Yep. <laughs> so what do you not do? Is there anybody that this is like contraindicated for? Um, Certain, I would say no. Um, you do need to be able to get down on the floor and up again to really continue. We do have often have people, I had a man come in and he couldn't get down to the floor. So we started him in a chair and taught him some breathing and saw them, taught him some poses in a chair. And that's mm -hmm. a great way to get started. And then eventually if you continue with that, you'll get enough flexibility to get up and down off the floor. And you can do embodiment in like if I visit, sometimes I do go to people's homes if, they're, if they've really thrown their back out and they can't drive, I'll come to their home. They'll lay on their bed and I can do embodiment while they're laying on their bed. We put a couple blankets under their knees in bed. That's great also for elderly people who can't get to the floor. But to come to class, you really need to be able to get up and down off the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you'd like to share that we haven't covered? One thing I wanted to share is um, in the classroom, in the group classes, we work in what we call themes. There's 12 themes, and each theme's about four weeks long, so it works very well throughout the year. And each theme focuses on something different. So we start, we have a daily practice theme. Mm -hmm. We have a lower spinal release theme, an upper spinal release theme. Most of my classes right now are in abdominals theme. So we're learning how to use your abs so that you can open up the core of your body and support your low back with your abs. We have standing, we have back bends. So even though it sounds like people say, oh, you use all these props, you use all these blankets, it's so gentle. It's really not gentle. It's really very deep. And we also do some really, some active stuff. So there's always, you know, it kind of starts out, the themes start out very gentle, but as the themes progress, they get more active so that you can learn to use your body more actively, but stay open at the same time. So it's kind of like the Massachusetts weather. You know, <laughs> if you're not like loving the theme, just wait another week or two and the theme is gonna change. Well <laughs> and you said. might be getting into something because everyone wants to focus on something different. You know, you might have neck and shoulder tension, but somebody else has low back pain or you know, foot pain. So in class, we try to cover a variety of things so that we get to what everybody really wants to work on and also what some people are better at than others. Like some people love back bends and some people hate forward bends, you know. So mm -hmm. it gives you a chance to find the things you're good at as well as the things that are a challenge for you that you really still need to work on. Right. And I know I took a class with you. Yes. Which I enjoyed greatly. Mm -hmm. And what I found was it was very relaxing. It was very... Um, calming like we said but um, I had been told just previous week before that I had tension in my upper back and I found after your class that that was a part of my body even though it was very calming and very relaxing I could do everything when I left the class a couple hours later that was achy 
Yeah, and that's not that unusual. And that's what we call relapse. So you get a lot of opening, which is great, mm -hmm. but you can't quite maintain it. So your body starts to go, oh, I like the way I was. And it starts to shut down again. And you feel that achiness as it shuts down. And we like to say we do incremental opening. So we never like to go and open you all up or release you so that you have, you know, oh my God, I'm like flying high. <laughs> we like to say like, okay, just go a little and then a little more and then a little more so that you don't, that doesn't happen. But often after a person's first class, it does happen that they're a little achy. Or if we do something that really just gives you a lot of release, sometimes you know, it does happen that you're a little achy afterwards, but it usually means you got into some area that was really tight mm -hmm. and you got some release and now it's just kind of letting you know it's there. What about emotional release? Is there a tie? There is. Sometimes people will get very emotional and they'll, they'll you know, release some emotion, maybe with tears. Um, and we do have a pose we put people in when they're feeling like that, which is a twist, because twists do help calm your emotions. Mm -hmm. And it's very supportive. We put a lot of blankets around you, even though you might not need those props, we kind of over prop you to help you calm your emotions. And I have had to use that in class a few times when people have just gotten a really deep release and some emotional and sometimes they don't even know what the emotion is or what's come up for them. And usually at that point, they release it and it's gone. And they don't have to necessarily know what it is, but something they've been carrying for a long time could just melt away. Hmm. Interesting. That's kind of like wrapping up a baby that's, that's having a hard time. Yes, it is. It's a little just bit like that. Just giving them a lot a of love swaddling. and support, yeah. and making yeah. them feel good. So... Um, why don't you share with the audience where you teach class again? Make sure everybody knows okay. that. I teach class in Tranquility Yoga in Westford, Mass, and at Soham Yoga in Westboro, Mass. Excellent. And how can people reach you? You can reach me several ways. My website is www.yogawithcarolweight.com. My email is yogawithcarol at gmail.com. And my phone number is 508-662-3763. So any of those ways. So, and you do, like you said, you do do private sessions. You come yes. to people's homes if they can't get out yes. and about. Because you, basically you want to make sure that this yoga is accessible to everybody. Yes. Because it's obviously very healing and it's very supportive and it, it helps complement conventional therapies and help people truly heal. So. Correct. So thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you for having me. It's, it's been great. lovely. And um, like we said, Carol can be reached at www.yogawithcarolweight.com, yogawithcarol at gmail.com. And, and, and I can be reached at info at newbeginningstohelp. So thank you for joining us and have a great day.